This is Planet Rock. It's one man in his prog. I'm Darren Reddick, and I'm very pleased to be joined by uh, R and W from ARW. Rick Wakeman and Trevor Rabin are my guests, and I'm very, I'm so excited to have you both here. Rick, you know, welcome home. Thank you. And uh, Trevor, it's very nice to meet you. Yeah, I, I should explain, Trevor. I got the sack from this the radio station. You were too oh. expensive. I, uh, <laughs> well, I was told the letters from Ofcom kept coming in because apparently on my Saturday morning show it was forbidden to continue to talk about women's monthly problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say hello back to you, but uh, I, I was going to do it in a different way. Uh, um, the, the old guitarist the, sadly passed Gary... Gary Moore. Gary Moore. Um, I remember I was at a club or something with him, and somebody met him who he, he didn't like. He knew he, he'd been told, and he was going to meet the guy. And, he's, and they said, hi, this is Gary Moore. And Gary said to him, hi, it's a pleasure for you to meet me. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. oh, he, did, nice. he did our Christmas party uh, uh, several years ago, and he wouldn't come out of his dressing room. He wouldn't talk to anybody. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? He was a strange yeah. but he was lovely, a, lovely a, guitar player. He was a good guitar player. He was yeah. a grumpy man, though. Anyway, do you realize you're the first person to talk to any uh, radio live of, of any of the ARW, isn't he? I, I didn't That's know that. I'm very, right. I'm very yeah. flattered to be doing that because, of course, Rick, uh, I've been pestering you about this for years. You have indeed. That and, is uh, true. So I was very pleased when uh, when the announcement finally came, and I, I got to ask what took so long. Well, Trevor and I and John, we had discussed it a lot, and because I mean, this man is so busy with his you know wonderful film scores and the classic films that he does. I mean, so in demand of things. I was busy doing all my stuff, as you know. John's always always busy, and it was just a, a finest. Oh, should we find a slot of time? Oh, something will happen. Something will come up. Uh, uh, Trev, Trevor came over to to England, and we had a, a a meeting in in London in Great Queen Street, and and talked about it. It was we. There was never a doubt that we all wanted to do it. And I think, as you and I spoke, it was a matter of of when. And Trevor and I both, I think, of the same feeling that it was when Chris died. It really hit home the. The famous thing that we're not immortal, we are mortal beings, and uh, my God, if we don't do it now, we never will. And so it was a matter of fulfilling obligations that we all had, and then freeing up the time and going, this is what we want to do, and I am so pleased we did oh, that. It's, you know, we went into rehearsal, and it just everything just seemed to be really natural, but vital and mm. exciting, and... Uh, I mean, I, I've never woken up every morning with that kind of desire. Can't wait to get to rehearsal. Hmm. Um, it's, woken it's, up with the other desire. Though, <laughs> yeah, but I finished that and then went to rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, Trevor, I'll direct this towards you. Why, why didn't this happen immediately after the Union Tour? Uh, everybody, as, I speak as a fan here. Right. After the Union Tour, we're like, oh, okay, now something... Something really interesting with with Rick and right. Trevor. Uh, th those were you guys were the pillars of that. For, certainly from my perspective, I was like, hopefully that's going to happen. And of course, but everybody went their separate ways again. Yeah, I, I think there was a lot of management and manipulation, record company manipulation stuff that I think both of us were suddenly surprised with. What I, I thought, I thought, and you know, obviously you're busy doing your stuff, and you think people are doing to the best of their ability for your. Betterment, and um, I think you know, without getting too specific, that kind of kept us apart. And I know from from my point of view, from the first day we met and and then played together, I thought, oh my god, it was like I've I've finally finally seen seen the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wanted to play from word go. It, it's true what Trevor said. There was unfortunately too many managements floating around in that whole union thing, and. Uh, Trev's told me some stories, some of which will, will remain uh, private stories, where I went, what? And I think equally I've told Trev some stories where he's gone, what? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but one of the things which I don't mind uh, saying is that uh, the Union Tour, I hated the album because it was completely screwed by the production guy who was given the job um, because we were all rehearsing for the tour, so... We, we had to leave it in somebody else's hands. Huge mistake, and it's it's, it's a shame because there's some great tracks on there, but it's uh, just abysmal. But the the tour, I was told after about a week into the tour by one part of the management that at the end of the tour that myself, 
Bill Bruford and Steve Howe would be superfluous to needs. Uh, <laughs> that the uh, they were going to carry on as a five piece, and so sort of got the idea that uh, it had been pulled together so that John could be pulled pulled back into the other the other fold. So, I mean, you know me, Darren. I'm one. I, you go okay if that's what it is. I'm not going to argue about it. Yeah. You know, I've got. I'm quite happy. I, but I was determined to in, enjoy that tour, and I did enjoy that tour. And I would say that 95% of the enjoyment of that tour for me was working with this guy. I absolutely loved playing with Trevor. We had so much fun, in, including some some uh, sort of rather naughty things that happened oh. on stage. I think. But go on. I'm not letting well, you off the I, hook on that. Can I tell this yeah, one? Yeah, go on then. Rick, um, well, it's actually, there's a DVD that's out. Um, I, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's out, where you actually see in the beginning of Seen All Good People where I'm supposed to be singing, and Rick's playing maracas before he comes in, <laughs> and he comes over to my side of the stage, and he whispers in my ear, and I'm about to sing, and I had to turn away because I was just completely filled with laughter. So I can't remember what he said, but you can imagine what he yes. said. Yes. <laughs> and then there was another thing on the song Changes uh, before this, Rick would come up to me every night and I, he, he gave me a word, like, or words. And they, they were never love. It was never love. It was like chest of drawers or <laughs> men menstrual, menstrual cycles, cycles was yeah. literally one of them. I had to fit that into the song oh, right. <laughs> somehow. I had to substitute a lyric for that. I can't just, couldn't just throw it in. So it was a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Testicle we had, uh, menstrual, all that kind, kind of thing, you know. Uh, cheese and onion. All, all, it's, all... it's almost worth going and finding the bootlegs of those shows. Oh, you know, it was great okay. fun, but we had such a lot of fun, and I knew at the end of the tour that was it. Let's look ahead a little bit, or into uh, the the upcoming tour, because when this was announced, the the second thing that came out was not just the tour; was there was going to be new music. Now you've since sort of said, well, not sure, but what is the status of writing new music? Well, we <clears throat> we'd been talking as Rick. As said for for years, kind of thing, and we were all very busy. But in between all of this, there there were pieces of music and little embryo embryonic stage stuff that uh, we would pass pass on to each other. And uh, I, one example, Rick wrote what something which is just at the moment called Bolero. Uh, yeah, it might not not stay that way. I don't no, know, but it's, it's a, certainly it's working a, title. A dance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh I got this thing I thought oh my god this is this is amazing and I just kind of just th thought of what wh what this can be once we've all done it and Rick's on it and and John's on it and I sent Rick stuff and uh and John me, stuff yeah as you know I'm just butt in for a second he's an amazing songwriter he sent me some you just go oh bloody hell yeah. great stuff and the same with with John and what's interesting because we're all quite different so when you put all those different things yeah. together it makes an, a, a wonderful jigsaw do carry on Lord no it's, it is a very different picture one that you might not expect almost but um, we did we, we have got quite a quite a collection of things but we just didn't want to do it quickly uh, and rush it out and and uh, the thought was well the tour was kind of Brian Lane, the man, very good manager, um, was kind of getting things together and moving, and I think we were moving a little less, less, more yeah. slowly. And next thing, this tour was up, and it's like, well, we we don't have. New and then we, it was we decided, you know what, this will be a great tour for us to have some fun, and hopefully the fans have some fun, and get us so tight that when we finish the tour, that's when we'll go and get get into that. So we're really thinking of it as much more long-term thing than, oh, let's get together and do a tour. He's very modest, because it was actually Trev's idea. He said to us all, listen, everybody would expect us, because we had loads of record company offers. So everybody would expect, do an album, go out and tour the album, which does look like a, a bank raid thing of what you're doing, which is not what this is. This is a longevity thing. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be really crude on the financial side of things, he can have far much more doing doing his films and um, without being unkind I can earn more than Silas because you divide it by five it's yeah it's it's you, you can do it. that's not why we're doing it so we thought we're, and Trev said why are we doing why do we do this why do we have to follow up we go, oh yeah do an album do this to no no let's 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 play let's uh, this is a long-term thing this doesn't all mm. have to be done by next next week and I think what 
Trev did and got and and con- very easily convinced John and myself was this is long term. This is not a short term one off. Let's go out and play a bit and then we'll go back to what we've always been doing. Uh, so uh, you're right. The idea of the music was an initial thought, but we went, no, hold on a minute. Mm. You know, we're not going to do that. And I think I'd like to think that people, including us, have waited this far for new music uh, to wait another year for something that's really special is hopefully wor- worthwhile. OK, let's move on to, to, to funner stuff. Um, Trevor, which which of your movies is your favourite, either musically or as a film to watch? Um, wow, wow, that's a, that's a really interesting question. Um, I, I think maybe one of the movies I think is quite enjoyable and very good acting with Denzel Washington and uh, who else was it? Well, it was, uh, Denzel was the star. It was called Remember the Titans. And it was, was a, yeah, it was a, a great film. movie. And uh, I really, really loved the score I wrote, um, which, you know, there's a lot I can tell you I didn't like. Did you do like. two Titans? Did you do? No, just, just the one. Oh, there, but there's a movie called The Clash of the Titans, which was yeah. not mine. Oh, that's, that was your Yeah, idea. but remember the Titans, um, I, I loved the movie. And then the, uh, subsequent to that, because of that movie, a lot of things happened. I uh, wrote the uh, national theme for the NBA. It's been running for 16 years or so and that came from titan so a lot of things have happened obama's uh, campaign the music for the entire campaign was uh, the titan I would remember, remember the titans i remember being called by the la times saying how do you feel about this i said well it would, it would have been nice to be asked but uh, i would have said yes yeah, you yeah. know, but, um, but so. And didn't was, you do something for the Olympics as well? The Olympics for the last twelve Olympics. I mean, there's two every year, winter and summer. For the last twelve Olympics, that's been the theme. There's not even a credit on it, but uh, at the end, it actually says music by John Williams. And I, every time Shelley, my wife, goes, "No, it's not." <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's one thing that really. It's one thing. Okay, I'm a muser as well, but I know a lot of people who when there's music and they like on something, they'll look at the credits to see who it was, especially on yeah. TV stuff and on documentary TV stuff. And invariably, it does not get listed. Mm. Right, right. But a movie that I really enjoyed doing the music for, which I actually did in London, there were no MIDI instruments, or mm-hmm. it was all just orchestra. Uh-huh. And yeah. you know what it's like just writing yes. to orchestra. You don't really hear it properly until you yeah. bring it down, and it's it just brought it really was chilling. It's called cool. it's called the the Great Raid. Um, and then I think probably one which. Um, has been very kind to me was uh, three in particular was National Treasure one and two which just did very well so yeah. um, on a on a that was the, sorry that was funny level. funny film in, yeah, in many yeah. ways oh, yeah again, didn't do bad. Excellent. Well, uh, I'm getting all kinds of phone calls from your man upstairs. I think we have to wrap it up. But uh, I'd like to say thanks very much for coming in. And I hope that maybe uh, I noticed I looked at your schedule for the tour in the UK uh, in March. I noticed you have a couple of days off just before the London show. So I'm hoping you guys can come back in and we can continue this conversation. We would, then. We would we'd love to. to come Absolutely back in. love to. We'd be delighted to come back in. You know I've that. known you since you were 16. Kind of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've known you well, Stop. before you became a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what... Uh, when he became you, a man. You, yeah, I was going to say, you, you're responsible <laughs> for me becoming nice, a man. It's nice to see the facial hair finally growing. <laughs> it's, 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 it's lovely. Brilliant. Rick Wakeman and Trevor Rabin, thanks so much for coming by and all the best with the uh, North American tour and can't wait to see you in March. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. For that. Jonathan from London says, I fell in love with Heart in my early teens and they were the first band I ever saw live, the Brigade Tour at the Birmingham NEC. Let's look ahead a little bit or into uh, the, the upcoming tour because when this was announced, the, the second thing thing that came out was not just the tour was there was going to be new music now you've since sort of said not sure but what is the status of writing new music well we we'd been talking as rick 